I'm doing fine, thank you, other than having a meltdown over AI. Um, and I'm trying <laughs> to reach a real-life person for my credit bureau information. <laughs> so anyway, um, Dr. Tim gave me, went, talked to me, walked me through his wonderful five-step and pattern uh, simple process, which I really like. Um, so I thought Michael could walk me through. I think this is a short form of what's on your um, app, the okay. short form of the latest. Um, so I'll, I'll hit them both this morning. <laughs> okay. I just uh, handed him a blank copy of a, a blank worksheet so that um, he could follow along step by step. And speaking of the app, anybody that's listening, we've got some kind of glitch. <laughs> The online worksheet that you can do on the website was not printing, and so we were attempting to work on that and get it straightened out and downloaded a different uh, PDF printer to the uh, website, and somehow that screwed up the apps. So <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I've got the tech in India helping me work on that, and so hopefully within the next day or so we will... Uh, have the apps the apps are working it's just when you get to the end of it and you say you want a PDF it doesn't give you anything so <laughs> apologies for that too it's like technology it's wonderful when it does what you want huh <laughs> but I understand that frustration too about you needing to get a human a lot of times I'll dial a number and, and you get this automated thing and I'm like, give me a human, give me a person, give me an agent, give me a representative. You know, it's like using all the different terms to see if you can get it to switch over and actually give you somebody that you can talk to. And it's so. amazing how fast I can melt down <laughs> when I can't well, when find a real life person. <laughs> you have a goal. Them. That you want a person to assist you, and all you get is a computer voice. So, yep, that can, that can that can bring up your way, frustration. That, by the way, interrupts you before you can even finish giving it information because it's it's the ultimate impatient authority figure, Jeannie. <laughs> so all my issues come up in spades. <laughs> well. So Michael will be here in a moment, and he will walk you through a worksheet on that. And how are you do, doing, dear heart? I hardly get to speak to you. <laughs> doing good. It's, um, you know, I'm sure you heard on the radio show Tuesday, my daughter in love uh, fell. And, of course, she's yeah. due to have the baby in two weeks. And uh, she broke her arm. So yesterday they actually put her on official medical leave. Um, I guess they didn't want... Uh, you know, any kind of problems with her having a broke arm and being at work or whatever. And so she's on medical leave up to the day that Lincoln is born, and then she goes into maternity leave. So, uh -huh. but anyway, well, she's, so you I, know. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I said that, that uh, really confirms what Dr. Tim was talking about on the show when he described that story about the gentleman and his son, that really there are – there is a human heart. It's just finding how do we get around the AI so we can find yeah. the heart. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, right. It, um, well, since there's been that, also there's been that um, uh, release in the Los Angeles Times about even Social Security is concerned that there might have got someone might have gotten into all of their files including the uh, Social Security numbers and everything. Yeah, it's crazy. That, oh, we're you know, we're it's, looking at... Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, it's like there's a whole group of people that have nothing better to do than to hack into everybody else's business. Well, it's like uh, Pierre Pradervan reminds me when I get into his 30, 365 Blessings to heal ourselves right. in the world. And he says, you know, they haven't figured out yet because they really think it's their profession. And they haven't figured out yet how to get their needs met without hurting someone else. 
Mm. And so he says, and bless them. And I said, oh, but I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> and then he says, well, bless them anyway. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that doesn't mean that you have to, you know, let them off the hook or right. um, or ignore or forget, you know, what they've done or anything. It's not saying that they're innocent or whatever, but you go inside and look at what they're resonating for you because they're actually given a gift. Sometimes it, we don't yeah. like that gift, but... <laughs> I know. I don't like the body suit you're showing up in. <laughs> <laughs> that was that. That was one of the real takeaways from that fire the grid that I was telling Michael about about that lady who um, she and her son drowned, and right. how she had that near life experience, and they all showed up as extraterrestrials, and she finally said, "Why are why are you extraterrestrials?" And they said, "Because if we'd have said we were angels or anything, you would have just drowned." So since she was a Star Trekkie, Trekkie, they message everything for her in ways that she, her brain cells can hook into. It's pretty cool. I mean, I took a lot of good takeaways away from that whole long uh, YouTube um, Mm -hmm. perspective. So, but in the heat of the night, we forget it. Yeah, yeah. Well, Michael's with us now, so I'll I'll be quiet and let you all proceed. Well, thanks for chatting with me. It's sweet. Absolutely. <laughs> My apology for taking time to get here. I just did a uh, an interview, and it ran a little over with a group called Seeds of Change out of Florida that are working with, and I didn't actually write the name down, but a World Healing Council. And we're talking about bringing laws of living into their prison program and lots of good stuff happening. So cool. That ran, right. that ran a little bit over time. And I just came in in time to hear you say the words uh, doing the good to someone without hurting them. Tell me, what was that conversation? Oh, that was from, P- I've been using the Pierre Prattervan 365 Blessings to Heal Ourselves in the World. Uh, so right. every day I cry if I miss, and I, I I haven't missed more than two days in a row, so I just catch up easily. But um, uh, in there, he has blessings for just that sort of thing of people who are scammers and rip offers or entrepreneurs who really don't care. It's about the bottom line, and what and it's like uh, what the way of mastery says. Also, it's very similar. Is he says. They just, that's their profession. They see that as their profession. And so they just haven't, they haven't awakened to how can I get my needs met without hurting someone else. It's all about Mm -hmm. awakening, Michael. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's the objective is let's wake up. When I tried to get on, and all I could get was an artificial intelligence, <laughs> and I wanted a rep. Well, you know, it's um, you know beyond belief and the mind. A lot of people are believe, 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 but beyond belief in the mind, there's a world of direct experience. And for me, the objective of the forgiveness process, the objective of all of this work, is to step into that direct experience and yes. have that personal experience personally experienced. And and out of that comes the recognition of who we are as human beings and what our real purpose is here in the game of life. You know, recognizing right. that all hostility, fear, guilt, blame, shame, drama, and trauma, they're all just products of the mind. And to heal, you've got to be out of your mind. And that's a, a big thing that, uh, you know, most people, they're... they're whole game without realizing it is they want to be self-referential. You know, well, here's what my mind knows. Well, but what is the truth? And so that's the my, my take on the objective of the whole forgiveness process. That's right. what makes real meaning. You know, Dr. Tim, toward the end there, I heard him quoting Carl Jung, and another quote that I just came across recently from Jung is, the least of things with a meaning 
It's worth more in life than the greatest of things without it. Uh, Can you repeat that? Yes. The least of things with a meaning is worth more in life than the greatest of things without it. I'm writing it down. The least of things with a meaning is worth more in life than the greatest of things without it. Okay, then the greatest. Okay, perfect. That's Carl Jung also. I love Carl Jung. And Rumi. Awesome, awesome. The, um, yeah, what's, my brother used to work in um, a business where he was basically the a tech guru. And, and he, the employees called him the, I think it was something like the um, computer leprechaun or something like that. And he would go around, and they had their computers were um, messing up and stuff. And he'd go in, and he'd look at them and smile sweetly and say, did you say good morning to your computer today? <laughs> and they'd say, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you don't speak sweetly to your computer, how do you think it's going to want to work for you? <laughs> they'd call him the the tech angel or the tech fairy or whatever. The, well, I wouldn't say fairy. That would he would the te- probably the take the offense at that. But, but yeah. Um, yeah. The, the tech whisperer. There you go. That's it. The tech whisperer. So, so anyway, I'm ready for this. So what are we going to work on today? Um, we're going to work on hopelessness, helplessness. What is it? Um, Hopelessness and and learned helplessness. And why is it that we're working on that in particular? Well, it happens because I was uh, following your your taking Susan to her worksheet two days ago, and right. what I learned was it really opened a lot of things for me. Why my daughter. Was the, is the way she is, why my cousin chose that route also. It's part of my realizing that I chose fear. And my fear, which is adrenaline-based, my terror, covered my rage, which is also adrenaline-based, and it's terror, like you, said, like you showed so clearly in your book of the man and the woman stick figures when they were internally dialoguing to themselves about the other. And right. um, then the, the rage was just primal. It's like the tremor in my left arm. I mean, it, um, I'm sure that problem, I'm not sure of anything. I suspect that when my mother started pounding on me when I was two, that I probably tried to hit her first. You know, I mean, that's what would a two-year-old do when their goal was being thwarted, right? And quite, probably, quite likely. And she, yeah, and then she... She continued, so I didn't. I learned very quickly. Don't take the rage route; you might get killed. Whereas somebody else in the same situation might have just taken on that rage because they didn't care at that two years old. All they saw was the primal scream and rage, and so and and so I learned over time living with my mother that I was safer to be helpless and to be quiet and to shut up and to do what she said and that the hopelessness came in because of the fact that I had spent time with my father. I would have probably been really hopeless otherwise. Um, Whenever mom was getting her divorce, she'd send me to my father and I'd stay for six months. And that was the difference between night and day because my grandmother, paternal grandmother, was a total um, Madonna figure, (laughs) that not to my mother, apparently, but to me, 
and she right. um, and the whole family situation there, I just felt like I was nested and safe. Um, right. But when I when that happened three times, by the time I hit the end of the fourth grade, when my mother came with my last stepfather um, that she had just married and whisked me away, unbeknownst to me, unbeknownst probably to my father, she just would show up on the doorstep, taking Cindy. Um, whoops, that was a Freudian slip. I wasn't supposed to let you know my nickname. Anyway, <laughs> mm-hmm. the um, uh, and we went to San Francisco, which was a real hit. It was at Hunter's Point, which was a naval station there, um, in the midst of the worst part of one of the worst parts of San Francisco. Uh, got bus to school across of the city because the Navy wanted to send me to a good uh, all the kids to a good school and would go through the worst parts of oh, the industrial section um, and places just getting to the school. Everything was cement. I was miserable. I didn't even know I was depressed because what? Mm. I was 10 years old, 11 years old. And by then, I had given up hope. That's when my eyes started deteriorating big time. And, um, Things you didn't want to I see. First, oh, I couldn't. Uh, no, just shut down. I don't want to see it. So my vision got very nearsighted. And uh, uh, my left eye is much worse than my right. That's the one where my the cataract that is showing up is worse. And then my right cataract. And, you know, it's, I just shut down. Just totally shut down. Well, I hold the space we, that, uh, yeah. that you're ready to open this up and that your I want to. ability of your brain to formulate accurate images based on information coming in through your eyes enhances and rock and roll back to the, the true human and roll. form. That sounds like a good one. And I've... You know, I really have chosen, I have chosen to learn about the great physician within us. And Louise A. is really helping me. I just, I just want to go for cause, Michael. Just go, just take me to cause. You know, I don't want to mess with the symptoms anymore. But we do have to mess with the symptoms. Oh, you're going to pass through them. Yeah, pass through them. You're going to have to pass through them. You know, the, the key thing being made? to be able to soften and breathe right. through the symptoms when they start to move. Right. And I love what Carolyn May says. She keeps saying, pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. And I like that. Yeah. That's in her anatomy of the spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure pain is inevitable, but we'll we'll, we'll go with that one for now. So... What's, have you determined what the object of attention of this worksheet is going to be? So if we were to fill in number 1C, who are you focused on or what are you focused on? What name would you put in there? What I think, I'm, put I in think there? I'm going to focus on me. I'm going to focus okay. on me because at some point okay. I, little, little one, okay. chose... So put Cindy in there. Oh, and by the way, I get a feeling my Cindy is actually mothering me. Can you believe that? Yeah, that's okay. That's cool. Sure. She's the keeper of my memories. It's a holy Okay, so you've got Cindy. Mama Earth. (laughs) Mama Earth. All right, so you've got Cindy in there. Yep. My perception is... And then what's your perception? My story is I, I don't get to live with my father or I want uh, where I can be safe. Now, if you can so rephrase two, that. There are two, well, there are two distinctly different goals there. One is to live with your father. The other is to be safe. From everything well, you said it's... in this preamble, I would expect each of those would produce a different healing result. So let's select one or the other. Well, in and your I would goal, suggest we go for being goal. safe. In your goal, it says my desire is to have something, 
so that I can be safe. It's always so that I can be safe. Yeah. Okay. So that's being safe is the second aspect of that goal. Okay. Well, and so, and I'm I'm offering that you might want to back that up a little bit and okay. do number one C on being safe and see what comes up when we get down. Instead of jumping ahead because you know about the worksheet, how if we just stay here on number one C, who you're focused on, and, and I'm happy to support you whichever direction you want to go. But what I'm offering is that I think oh, that okay. those two goals, we're on number one C, you're focused on Cindy, and your perception right. of your story is, I want to be safe. Or I want to live with my dad. I'd suggest I one or the to, other of those and see where it goes. I want to live with my dad. Oh, I can't. I don't. I didn't get to live with my dad. Or I don't get to live with my dad. Because. Well, but we're looking. But what we're looking through to is what's the constructive result? What What's the situation? When we get to, you know, what's the constructive result? So the story is, I didn't li- get to live with my dad. I didn't. Am I getting okay. that? Okay, so past tense is okay. Okay, I didn't get. And then let's go back. Okay. So you've got that established. That's where we're going to go. And so let's go back to the beginning of the worksheet and the premise, my essential nature, my human life, my very being is love. Okay. goal of this internal forgiveness wake-up sheet is to empower me to remove fear and or hostility and return to the direct experience of love 24-7, 365. Oh, so I'm let's on do a number 1A. You. I, I don't even have that in mind, my worksheet. Okay. Any of what you just wrote. I have, the, I think it's the brief form of your latest worksheet on the website. Okay. Okay, well, let's just go to 1A then. Okay. I, Celinda, who am love, am experiencing that hopelessness and learned helplessness. Okay. Is so that what I'm hopelessness? Well, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, that's, if that's what you're saying. But my offering would be, if you look beyond that 1B, each emotion is a separate worksheet. So let's select one of those. And then I'd suggest taking a blank worksheet and putting the other emotion on another worksheet because each of them will produce a different healing result. Okay, learned learned helplessness is what I want to focus on. Like, I can't do anything about this, I'm a victim, that sort of thing. Yeah. Does that work? So the feeling would be hopelessness. And then draw it. What would if you were to do a line drawing of what? Actually, let, let's let's investigate this just a little bit. Is hopelessness here just a thought? I think it is. I don't think we're at the emotion yet. Hopelessness is a thought. I don't think it's a feeling. No. So what? If if you if you well let's stay with the word we started with instead of shifting things let's not change things let's stay with what we started with so if you're looking at hopelessness here I'm just offering I'm just exploring with you is this really an emotion how about, how about, how about unsafe is that no an emotion? no 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 I don't want to change no 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 I want to oh. explore what you've already said we don't want to change it to something else I'm not asking okay. you to do that okay so just stay with me so. Hopelessness, what I'm questioning you is, is hopelessness really an emotion or is hopelessness a thought? The thought is, life for me right now is hopeless and I feel, so do I feel afraid, do I feel sad, do I feel enraged? What are my emotions? I felt rage this morning when okay. I was trying to ask the artificial intelligence but I think, as I mentioned to Dr. Tim, I think behind that rage was fear. Mm-hmm. Okay, but but stay with stay with what's in your face. So, so in B now we're not doing what you were doing this morning. Okay. We're working on a worksheet that has to do with your desire to live with your dad and not being able to do that. 
So what you said was your emotion was hopelessness, and I'm asking you, is that really the emotion, or is that really the answer to the thought in number 1D? It's hopeless, and my emotion is what? Around this issue. Not this morning, not yesterday, not 10 minutes ago, not two minutes ago, just right now. If you tap into this whole situation that you're working on with Dad and Mom, and the thought is either I am or life is hopeless, what's the emotion attached to that? 1B. I don't... Are you breathing? Are you breathing? Um, I'm breathing. I'm just thinking what I keep going to is the helpless. The learned okay. helpless well, is just helpless. Right. I, I don't have okay. power. I'm disempowered. I, I'm, okay. I have They're no, all thoughts. Okay. They're all thoughts. So what's behind disempowered? And, 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 each, I, and each of those thoughts is going to be a separate worksheet. But right now, what I'm asking you to do, you identified hopelessness as a thought. I'm offering that's a thought. So what I'm asking you to do, if you go back into that whole circumstance and situation and tap into this hopelessness, this thought of hopelessness, what's your emotion? Is it sad, fear, anger, rage, guilt? What's the emotion that's tied to this experience or this thought of hopelessness? Because hopelessness isn't an emotion. Is depression an emotion? Depression would be an emotion, yes. Let's, let's, so would that be it? Okay. That would be close. So then one be depression, okay? And I've never thought so about depression draw, before. Well, depression to me would be like a a flat line. (laughs) Flat line. Okay, perfect. Perfect. That's what you want then. That's what what goes in that box. And then just check the thought out in the box. If I'm in pain, my thinking is in error. So we're going to move from this situation is cause to recognizing that it's your thinking that's cause. So, okay. my, den- my denial, and then you put your initials in there. Yep. And if our wording is slightly different on the worksheet, but just we can just go with whatever whatever the wording okay. is here. That'll work. So, my oh, denial in your initials uh-huh. displaces my experience of myself as my essence love, and my mind tells me that my emotions are caused by my trigger, and you already got that in there, the situation with Dad. Was Actually, the that number would one be the situation with Mom, because my dad was that previous worksheet with Michael and with Dr. Tim. So my, the, my perception story is having to live with my mom. And that's the, that's the depression yeah. Okay. So then we're going to put mom in number one C then. The first well, blank in number one C is going to be mom. Yeah. I have to live with my mom. So that's your story. Okay. Yeah. So then on to D, the truth is, only, so, so my mind tells me that I'm in this state of depression because I have to live with my mom. The truth is, right. o- only my thoughts cause my emotional upset. And let yourself just be with that thought and breathe into that. And then allow yourself to identify, and you actually already identified several thoughts, but thoughts, and if you've got some blank worksheets, each thought, if you would go into 1D and just fill in so that you've got the thoughts recorded for future workings around this issue. Okay. So the, the thought that I use to cause my depression is 
uh, the hopelessness, uh, the helplessness, and the powerlessness. So you wanted to go with uh, okay. helplessness. So I'm we hopeless, go helpless, helpless, powerless. That would be three and different worksheets. Yeah, and I'm going to go with helpless because that's living with my mom. Like uh, I was totally squished and had no power, so I was helpless. Okay. So write down all those thoughts. Write down all those thoughts. Yep. And helpless is what I want to focus on in this one. With my depression. Depression could go with all three of those. (laughs) Punish will see, but... Breathe into all of that. So what's your punishment thought toward mom? Toward my mom. Um, yeah. Toward, okay, toward mom. Oh, Cindy's in that. Toward 1C is, um, that would be myself, is 1C, would be um, my punishment. No, 1C is rate. mom. 1C is mom. Oh, okay, we're going to trade mom then. <laughs> Well, no. rage. It's rage let's back up. I, I don't. So, so I don't know where you're at now. You, you, you switch. We're hopeless. We're helpless. We're mom. We're dad. We're, so I'm not sure which, which is what now. My understanding was one C. Who you're focused on was going to be mom for this worksheet. Is that correct? Well, I said I wanted to focus on Cindy. Because um, even though the story is I had to live with my mom because, okay, I'll focus on my mom because it will just get too complicated. Okay. So I want to punish my so mom just, by being rich. Okay. So take a breath. Let's just take a couple of breaths and just let go of everything for a minute. Let yourself clear okay. your mind. And... I'll invite you to go back and listen to this uh, section that we've done so far. And this is just an offering. It may be accurate, it may not. But you might want to just look at how shifting your mind around creates confusion. And perhaps that's a mechanism of avoidance that you use. Where I feel clear is that it wasn't my mom's fault. So that's why I put Cindy in there. But I realized the clarity that comes from putting my mother in there instead because of my perception and story that I had to live with my mother. So, Mm -hmm. but I was the one that chose the helplessness, hopelessness, and powerlessness or squished depression. Yeah. My my input would be I don't think you chose that. A child at that age okay. doesn't choose those kinds of things. I think there were probably generational energies that were already in you that were just resonated by the circumstance. In uh, that being, place, you know, shifted in around case, and such. In that case, the clarity would repeat, make my mom want to see. Okay. I got it. Okay. Just notice I'm good at, in, I'm in the good future. At taking blame. I'm good at taking blame. Well, my that kids. wasn't my that wasn't my point. That no, wasn't no. my point. I'm good at taking blame. Not that you blame me. I'm t- good at taking I, blame. You know, the, I'll blame myself. Yeah. You're you're in another domain right now. I'm I'm not even in the domain that you're in. It's got nothing to do with you blaming. What I'm inviting you to notice is whether or not you, your mind habitually creates confusion in order to avoid dealing with things in your life. I think so. I'm offering it appears that that might be a truth, and if it is, being aware of it, you can clean it up. Right. Because in just oh, you I'm know, sure. I'm steps sure. one because... A... Steps 1A, B, C, and D, we've been all over the map. And then right. getting into E, we're in a different ter- terrain altogether. So it looks like maybe confusion is an avoidance mechanism. And just, you know, 
start to pay attention to that. If, it, if it's accurate, then whenever your mind starts to do this confusion game, you say, oh, wait a minute. No, you're not running the show mind. I am, and we're going to stay on track here. And breathe. So what what we came to, I think, that seems the most direct and clear is I surrender who I'm loved. I'm experiencing depression, that being feeling squished. Right. And my my emotions are caused by my trigger mom. Okay. And my story is I had to live with my mother. Forced to live with her. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So now, the truth, what you know, thought do I use um, to create this depression? Is that I'm hopeless, helpless, and powerless. Okay. Great. So that's the thought. And breathe. When you when you say those words, what happens to your breath? Oh, it shuts down. Okay. So you remember the idea that you know energy that's off the mark in Aramaic was called sin, okay. and for the forgiveness of sin, not the Greek definition of you know some terrible awful thing, but just the energy that doesn't belong. What do you do? What you know, Yeshua, you know, went to the river and jumped in and got water poured on him because that was Jewish tradition, but he never did any of that. What he did was he baptized people in what? The Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, which is Ruha, which is the breath. The your breath. breath. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So just allow yourself to stay connected or go to that connected space with that breath as those thoughts come forward because when I extract my breath from those thoughts, that's when, as an energy, they tighten down, lock down, and get stuck in tissue. When I notice where the tightness is in my body and I breathe into it and let it soften, that's where that energy becomes unlocked. It's in my heart, in my gut. Okay. Okay. Good thing to notice. Pardon? So just make a good thing to know is just make a note or yeah. there's space there that, gee, I'm, I'm locking this energy into my heart. And then what's your punishment toward mom? Rage. Yeah, you want to rage at her. And then but your punishment I toward I'm self? Too. Oh, I do right. rage against myself, but I would never rage at her. It was too dangerous. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, I'd, I'd make notes of that, and I hope you've got some blank worksheets there. And I'd make a note to uh, to do another worksheet where number 1D, just go to another worksheet, and on number 1D, Mark, it's too dangerous for me to rage at mom. That's the thought. And that'll be another worksheet to work on. So just mark that one in, a, in another worksheet, and then that'll be future one to build around that thought. I'm sure you've heard me say before that when I do worksheets, I always have at least 10 blanks. And what I've found over the years is that I have at least, out of just about every worksheet that I've done, I have at least four others if I'm really paying attention to my thoughts. And this is a way to pay attention to your thoughts. Oh, geez, here's this thing. It's, you know, it's dangerous to... The rage at mom. That's so a what I would do is intense that thought. Right. Yeah, and because then I would rage at mom within myself. So who yeah. was that hurting? <laughs> yep. I mean, so then, what's your punishment thought towards self in that rage. situation? Mm-hmm. Okay, so raging itself. Whew, what a catch twenty-two. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was my sweatshirt. I have to do it myself is on the front, and on the back was I can't do it myself. Mm -hmm. So notice that 
just, you know, we don't have a visual audience here, but notice there's a whole community of people right now from all over the world, probably down into Australia and over into Sweden and, you know, perhaps Poland with Sandy. Notice there's a whole community all over the world holding a space for you right now to empower you and to find that space within yourself where you can do it. And then step in. The next step is to step into the willingness and accompany this, you know, really clearly accompany this next thought of number two with your breath. I'm willing to process all disease as I go through the physical, mental, and emotional symptoms of healing. Yeah, and just breathe with that and a big check mark there. Like, yep, I'm going for it. So now, my desire. To construct a result, the exact goal that drives my un- and, un- and covers my pain is that I want one C to... Let me live with my dad. So I can okay. be safe. So, so here, <clears throat> let's let's just think about this for a minute. I'm going to take, ask you to take another blank worksheet, and on number three A, write that. I want my mom to let me live with my dad. Oh, okay. I want. Well, wouldn't that be for this worksheet? Well, this, if you would, just mark that on another worksheet in number 3A. And then let's come back to this and breathe. And just looking over the whole, you know, at 1A to E, take a look. I, Cindy, whom love, experiencing depression, and want mom. Go through each step of it. And then seeing as how mom is the focus of this worksheet, and I think my my offering here is that it's secondary to want mom to let you live with dad. I think the primary behind this, from what I'm hearing from you, is that you want mom to treat you lovingly, gently, and with respect, or treat you like a human being, or whatever the words are that the real underlying goal that has all this rage moving. I suspect, yes, there's work to do around wanting to live with dad, but I don't think that's primary. I think what's primary is what's the goal? You know, if, if in that situation, here you are, little Cindy, and you're wanting to live with your dad and you're in rage and you want to rage at mom and you rage at yourself, if you were to turn to mom and give her instructions about that moment, what would those instructions be for the ideal outcome? I want mom to treat me with love and respect. Core one around this issue with mom. Dad's a secondary, but until you deal with the core one, dad's a distraction, I think, would be my offering. And so if you want her to treat you with love and respect, then what would that empower you to so that I can? Breathe. Feel uh, uh, so that I can feel safe. Yeah. I don't know what else to put in there. Um, no, it so that right I... on track. <sighs> I could see you. I get a visual of you if if you were there with mom and she was treating you lovingly, gently, and respectfully. I could kind of, you know, the visual I get is I kind of see you dancing and, and just like expressing and like being liberated. Oh, so it would be feels, I, so I could, 
I could feel safe being myself. Yeah, yeah, there it is. And you could recapture the truth of who you are and be safe enough to express that in mom's presence. Rather than having to hide from who you are from her and by hiding it from her, hiding it from yourself. And let yourself just take a couple of nice deep breaths on that one. Yeah, because how could I... Yes, I would like to. Because I was thinking, how could I get out of the forest of confusion if I couldn't even be myself? Yep. This is the core stuff. be myself, which would be exploring who I am. Yeah, Yeah, you'd have a platform for liberty and expression. Right. Which is what moms are designed, you know, what we're designed to have moms for. And if you look at that core issue, were you a platform for liberty? You know, you mentioned issues with your daughter. Were you a platform for that kind of liberty for your daughter? No, I had no clue. And because I was the child that would just be in the middle of the street yelling, help, 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 you know. Uh, or wanting help and and yelling that, oh, somebody come rescue me. But my daughter didn't do that. She didn't yeah. communicate at all. So I was trying to communicate when it was safe, but yeah. I was crying out. But she couldn't do that because she felt so right. unsafe and she chose a different route, you know. Yeah, she so chose a different route. How were you? No. If I were you, I would take this whole first half of the worksheet and do that worksheet on yourself as your daughter's mother. But your mom in this worksheet now. And I suspect if you clean that energy up, you'll open a whole different space with your daughter. Okay, now pass that by again because you lost me. Okay. Who would be okay. in 1A? So, Who would be so, if you were to do uh, from step one to step three, okay. as you have it now, I would suggest that you do that worksheet where you are mom and it's your daughter's name in number one C. And you do that worksheet as your daughter on you. So what's your daughter's name? Larissa. Why so I, Larissa, who... Why would she be one I two? Larissa. Why would Okay, she's one Because a. because okay. you're doing the worksheet or pardon me, one A. You're doing the worksheet as her. I misspoke. Yes. Yeah, that's so I Larissa, who am love, am experiencing whatever it is she experiences and I'm focused on mom and whatever whatever that is, I just suggest doing mm-hmm. that whole worksheet. As though you were her doing it on you as her mother. Okay. I have a feeling so a no- she also was going through depression. Yeah. Or she just chose a different... Probably reaction. generational. Yeah, probably generational. Oh, I'm sure. A lot of violence in my mother's side of the family. Physical yeah. violence. Was there physical violence with you toward Larissa? Yes, except when the Holy Spirit stopped me. And then it wasn't physical, but I didn't have the tools. I had no clue, and so I just became verbal. I stopped in the middle of spanking her because this voice in my head said, stop it. And I did, and I never hit her again, ever. But I certainly hit her verbally. Okay. Make those notes on that on that worksheet. You've got a separate worksheet. Okay. Make those notes, so you've okay. got them. Okay. And once you've got those notes written down, let me know, and then come back to this worksheet we're doing now, and let's repeat number three B as you breathe, so that I can. I want mom to okay. treat me lovingly, gently, and respectfully. Create a platform for my full and free expression so that I can 
I think your idea or your words of explore who I am, who I really am. Yeah. Feel safe being yeah. myself and explore yeah. who I am. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Oh, to explore who I am. Oh. So it's the same goal, really, for the two of us. Probably. Yeah, I think so. Well, it comes down the family line, Michael. And as you do that separate worksheet as her, it will have a whole different impact on your energy field, and it will have an impact on her energy field, and perhaps the safety she'll be able to experience that will open the space for some of those energies between you to be cleaned up. And I suspect between her and my grandson, Michael, as well. Mm. Cool. The apple does not fall far from the tree. Yeah, unfortunately. So number four, action step. I choose choose love, love my my essence. essence. It stirs the love in everyone involved. The rose and butterfly story. So going backward, allow yourself to imagine that this choice by you is literally resonating the love in mom as well as resonating the love in your daughter. I would love to do one on my mom and my grandmother, too, because I think my grandmother Absolutely. was squished. Okay. Okay. So so now you've got other blank worksheets. Write them down. While they're in your mind, write them down. Start the okay. next worksheet. You know, grandma's number 1A. Mom is number 1A. And she was squished. Just a brief sketch. So you've got a reminder as to what that worksheet is. Because one of the things that happens is, if we, if when those subtle thoughts come, we don't write them down, the mind will tend to steal them from us. They'll tend to disappear them again. And when you breathe and uncover them, jot them down. Yeah, my grandmother was silent, and her way of punishing was to not speak to someone. And I think she was living in terror because my grandfather was apparently a beater. Mm. In fact, he commented so, on singing in church one day, and she never sang in church again. That's, mm. I think, the degree of their relationship to the degree that their relationship yeah. was one of domination. Yeah. Mm. So notice how beautifully this is all opening. It's like a rose petal opening to the issues that are family issues. So I would make another note for you to do a worksheet on your grandfather as your grandmother. So you're doing it in her stead. So and then the my same grandfather, with your mother. Okay. Because I also uh, suspect some sort of special um, sexual abuse somewhere in that family tree because my mother was always real careful with me, extremely careful. She wouldn't let me date until I was 16, which I was fine with me. It took the pressure off of me. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so I have no idea. So it would be my I, Bessie, who was my grandmother, doing right. the worksheet. On my grandfather, yeah. which would be number one C. Right. Okay. And, you know, <laughs> ask her permission. Imagine breathing into her space and that you do that worksheet as though you were her. And you might be surprised by what comes through from her. That you're acting as her surrogate in doing that piece of work. And, you know, you don't know, I don't know what that of that she took to her grave or is she still alive? No, no, no. She died. So what she took to her grave, and so as you do that, you may just be alleviating her of that burden. Yeah. So when I ask the permission of them, do I wait for a response before I do the worksheet? I I just, I'd energetically listen. Yeah. That's what I mean, energetically, yeah. something that would let me yeah. know, some sign that would let me know she's yeah. 
We were very close, by the way. Mm. She did the silent treatment once on me when I was living with her for a year in uh, Mountain Water, and she, uh, Oregon, and she, um, I was 14 going to school, and all of a sudden I noticed she wasn't talking to me. And my mother had said how she would do the silent treatment for weeks at a time. And so I went up to her. I had, I, we had a good relationship. I went up to her and I said, Grandma, are you upset with me? She never did the silent treatment with me again. She told me what her mm. issue was. I tried to do the best amends I could as a 14-year-old, you know, when you're so involved with yourself at that age and puberty and everything else. But, um, yeah, it was it was sweet. So, so my feedback, yeah, well, that was exactly what my feedback was going to be. So notice that you were probably the first safe space that she'd experienced in her life. What a gift to give her. I think I was her favorite granddaughter, but I'm not sure. Yeah. It, we had a close bond. Cool. Silent. Breathing with you. Different. Different than my paternal grandmother. Yeah. 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 It's okay. beautiful, Michael. So, I'm with you 100%. My thought is that um, perhaps... When we finish this worksheet, if you've got the space, go back to the codependence intensive videos and get the one where we did still point breathing and follow the guidance and do a still point breathing session to follow up on this. If you've got the space to do that, I think that would be really beneficial. Go ahead and do a still point session with yourself. Now, is there a link to that part of the thing? Because I'm rarely on the internet anymore. It's just, mm. it's just okay. not. Well, you should have from when you participated in the intensive. You should have a uh, an email. It'll be from Jeanette M. Shaw at MSN at Jeannie's email, or pardon me at Jeannie at whyagain.org. Right. My mistake. Right. Right. And uh, and there'll be a link in there to each of the sessions, and one of them will be the still point session, or at least one of the still point it sessions we did. Came, it probably came right after the intense second intensive closed, right? Probably that would, would fit. Okay, no. I'll, I'll look for it. I'm sure it's in There'll be a spreadsheet. Yeah. 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 There'll be a spreadsheet. Okay. And, uh, okay. So... Hey, we, we, I was just informed in my ear that we've got 90 seconds left for the show. Oh, okay. so, so my thought so is, we, um, let, let's take this up tomorrow and oh, continue this worksheet. Oh, Saturday, dear heart. How oh, yeah, Monday? And it's Friday already. <laughs> oh, Monday. Okay. Okay. And where and or we maybe go ahead. We're, we were Pardon? just getting ready to go into number five. Okay. Got it. I'll, I'll uh, make notes for myself. You you have been really... Okay. Well, thank you for the confusion aspect. I really... No wonder I've been lost in the woods all my life. Mm. Mm. Well, you might just want to go ahead and complete the worksheet. And complete it? On Monday, on Monday, we could go ahead and do it again on another level. Or you could take one of those worksheets that's going to be the same in the first part, and we could complete it with grandmother, mother. Maybe dad will even come in there, but we'll pick it up at step five if, with this worksheet or whatever's current for you on Monday. Right, because I didn't understand, of course, why my father couldn't save me. So, yeah, that would probably be, he's my other power person. In, Yay. In, uh, well, yeah, in the uh, opening the space. Thank you. I will uh, continue well, on to the best of my time. Yeah. So I, I want to acknowledge you for your willingness and thank you for that. I think that this has been a really powerful example for anybody that's following along. This will go into our worksheet shows. And I think it really demonstrates for everybody just how the process can unfold 
and uh, hopefully assist everybody in developing skill to become a, uh, a more um, proficient experience in the worksheet process. So thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Have a wonderful weekend. Uh, all right, you too, everybody. Have the best year yet of your eternal life. It's an awesome gift.